Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, there are two basically reasonably simple concepts, inshallah. One is midpoint. Okay. And the other one is the distance between two points. Okay. So let's say I give you this example, okay? So I'm going to plot two points, uh, two comma one, here it is, and then I'm going to plot another point, okay, five comma five, see that? Okay. <coughs> There are two things that we would like to find out, okay? One is, what's the distance between two points like this in the Cartesian plane? Okay, in the Cartesian plane. And the other is, if you, what's the midpoint of this? Midpoint is the middle point, right? So, if you're given two points, like I did over here, something like this right so two one all right and five five I think right if you're given two points like this you can connect the two like this right that's a segment so this is a segment right this is a line that goes forever right it's called a segment Okay, this is called a line. So, so, so this is a line, that's a segment. What is this? That's a ray. Ray starts here and goes this way. Line that goes this way and a segment. That's a segment. Okay, so this is a segment. So, first thing is, what's the midpoint? Midpoint is it divides this segment into two equal parts like this now when you put similar symbols there it means there's those two parts those two smaller segments are equals in length does that make sense so midpoint just divides this two now how do you find the ordered pit that belongs to that midpoint it's very easy okay it's like so easy it's like see that's it okay so midpoint okay if you have two points like x1, y1, and x2, y2, right? If you have two points like this, the midpoint is just like this. Average of the x's will give you the x-coordinate. And the average of the y's will give you the y-coordinate. Easy peasy. Right? So here we have the midpoint. To get the x-coordinate of the midpoint, you just go like, 2 plus 5 divided by 2 and the y coordinate you go 1 plus 5 divided by 2 average of these so this is 7 over 2 over count and, and the y coordinate is 6 over 2 which is 3 okay so if I do that so let's do this one 7 over 2 comma 3 there it is you see that? It's in the smack in the middle. You follow? Okay. It's easy. You know, midpoint, middle, average. Makes sense. Right? Now, it makes good sense to you, right? Okay. So, the midpoint formula is this, right? This, this is midpoint. You follow? Okay. You take the average of the axis. And then you take average of the y's to get the corresponding x and y coordinates, right? Okay. Now, the distance between two points is different. If you want to find the distance between. Okay. That formula is this. x2 minus x1 squared 
plus y2 minus y1 y2 minus y1 squared. All right, very different looking formula, right? Okay. And for the world, I don't know why it gets mixed the two up. It says, okay, so what's the what's the midpoint formula? And they go like, oh, that's the square root of like you know the x2 and y. And oh, wait, wait, square root. It's like, wait, what they're talking about? At midpoint, midpoint is just the average, and, and the distance. And they go, oh, this. Don't you like to take that? What's up? You know what I'm saying? It's so simple, right? I just don't know why they mix it up. Okay, now what is... Now you have to explain this to you a little bit, right? It's kind of daunting. Okay, the distance for me. <coughs> okay, watch. To understand the distance formula, you have to know the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Yes? Which, if you ask anybody, says that's my electricity bill plus the water bill squared equals, I don't know, the square of the heating bill or something like that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Right? So you, if somebody asks you what's the Pythagorean theorem, you can't, you can say it. But that assumes that you know what the person knows what you're talking about. A squared plus B squared. The proper way to say is this. The sum of the squares of, of the legs of the right triangle equals the hypotenuse square. Does that make sense? That's like, if you say that, you know, the teacher will be like glowing, right? Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. So if you have a right triangle, now Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles. True or false? True. So... Now, how you this is a right triangle, right? Hmm? Yes? No. I didn't tell you it's a right triangle. This is like 92 degrees right there. You understand? So you can't assume a triangle is right unless you're specifically told. It's a decoy, okay? Here's a real right triangle. See? See that? That was a decoy. This is a real right triangle. Why? Because you're told it's a right angle. This symbol means it's a 90 degree triangle. So you can only apply the Pythagorean theorem to right triangles. Now, in the right triangle, A, B, and C. Now, it doesn't matter which one is A, which one is B. No, not really. But you know, smaller one, small side, B, and those. They could be the same. You could have a right triangle with these two sides being the same length. Is it possible? Of course it is possible. Nobody said so long. I could just make it look like, like you know, look like this. And they'd be like, well, it, it looks like pretty equal to me right now. See that? So they could, doesn't matter which one is A and which one is B. Okay? So, if A and B are the legs of it. Now, So, Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles. A, yeah. So you can label sides, you can label ground you know, X, Y, Z if you wanted to, but and you know, everybody knows that A, B, C. And Pythagorean you know, he didn't know A, B, C. He was Greek. He's like alpha, beta, gamma, dude. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't matter what you call it. But typically the sides are A, B, and hypotenuse. By convention, though, it's typically the side lengths are labeled with small letters. Whereas um, the vertices are labeled with capitals, <coughs> so usually small letters. Okay. Anyways, so Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles, and the Pythagorean says if you have a right triangle, doesn't matter which one it is, then the sum of the squares of the legs, okay, equals the hypotenuse square. That's the hypotenuse. H Y P O T T. Mm, Understand? So now, okay, does that make sense? Okay. So, in other words, there are relationships between the sides of any triangle. You get that? You just can't pick pick three sticks from the ground. 
Yeah, like a, like this, and make a triangle out of it, right? Like a shirt. Like how are you gonna make a triangle out of this? Three sticks, right? You can't. So the relationships have have to be somehow related. We learn about this. It's called a triangle inequality theorem. We learn that in the future show. But the relationship between the size of a right triangle, oh, it's at a different level. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? It's, <coughs> it's the level of a Pythagorean theorem. It is so famous. It's possibly the most famous algebraic theorem of all times. Now, think about this for a second. If it's the most famous algebraic theorem of all times, you should know it, right? You see? In the room, I'm not even yet. It's like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like the most famous. It's like, so you got, again, you can't say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Light bill plus, you know, electricity bill is water bills. And I can't do that. That's babyish. You have to say, articulate it. The sum. You're talking about a sum, first of all, right? How's that sum, right? The sum. You're talking about the sum. But sum of what? The legs? Yeah? No. The square of the legs. The sum of the square of the legs. Of what? Tom, Dick, and Harry triangle? Oh, no, no, no. The wrong triangle? No, no, no. The cute triangle? No, no, no. The right triangle. You understand? This only applies to right triangles. The sum of the squares of the right triangle equals the hypotenuse square. That is a Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is C squared. It's just A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, if you say it like this, let A and B be the legs of two legs of a right triangle and C be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Then A squared plus B squared plus C squared. You cannot use a variable until you define the variable. Otherwise it is haram. Do you understand that? You can't just throw out variables out there. Yeah? It ain't cheap. Okay. So this is one of the most beautiful theorems. Now, what if somebody said, oh, well, a squared plus c squared equals b squared? That's, that if c is the hypotenuse, it ain't why. <coughs> you understand that? So, the sum of the squares of the legs. Now, you've seen a one-legged right triangle? <coughs> no. The sum of the squares of the legs of the right triangle equals the hypotenuse squared. That makes sense. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Now, if I tell you, for example, okay, fine. I'm telling you this is the right triangle, right? Yes or no? No, because I didn't put the symbol there. Now I'm telling you it's the right triangle. You can't assume it is the right triangle until you're told specifically. Right? It could have been 91 degrees. Right? Okay, I got that. All right. Now it's the right triangle. Now if I say this side is 3, and this side is 4, you want to know what this side is. How do we know what that side is? Okay, now look. How do we know? Okay. If you ever see a right triangle, the first thing that should come to your mind is what? The Pythagorean Theorem. Right? If you see a right triangle in the, in the middle of the street, think right triangle, you know, Pythagorean Theorem. Hey, I can do this Pythagorean Theorem. Right? Right? If you open a microwave, it's the right triangle you're going to think, Ah, oh, Pythagorean Theorem! Can't fool me! First thing should come to your mind. Why am I saying that? Because you know, like, easy peasy questions on every single standardized test until, you know, 85 years old or something. Right? Do you understand? But it's like, you see a complicated question, in the middle of it is a right triangle. What do you think? Huh? Pythagorean Theorem! See a complicated, like, gigantic massive, huge, like, complicated triangle with planets going and then the circle and the airplane this way, train going that way. And you see, in the middle of it, you see a right triangle. What do you think? Hmm? Pythagorean theorem. Don't get fooled. You understand? Okay. So how do you solve this? I don't know. But dude, see Pythagorean theorem. You understand what I'm saying? You, see, you know I'm saying that, right? You know what's going to happen like in four months. I say, okay, how do we do this? I don't know. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just try to say, I say this all the way, right? Yeah. Okay, it's fine, it's cool. But then I say, in the middle of it! Then you get, oh, okay, sorry, sorry. 
Probably. Stuff will work. Stuff will work. Alright. Do you understand? So you see a right triangle? Put the head right there. Okay, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's put that in. So in this case, uh, this is a and this is b, right? Does it matter if I, if I, if I said this, okay, this is a and this is b? Hmm? No, it doesn't, right? It's okay. Because you're in square them anyways, right? What if it doesn't matter if I said this is A and this is B and this is C? Oh, yeah, because it's a, if assuming you're going to use that. Do you understand that? Okay, yes. <coughs> so these are the legs. Okay, now, <coughs> if this is a right triangle, okay, then this should apply, yes or no? <coughs> yes? Okay, then we have to solve for C. Let's call this C. Right? <coughs> so then I say 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared right all right so 3 squared is 9 4 squared is 16 equals <coughs> c squared so this is 25 equals c squared how do I solve for this I take the square root of both sides like this and I did a plus or minus square root, right oh yes so c is equal to plus or minus 5 now have you ever seen a right triangle with a negative side and hypotenuse? No. So, now both of these answers are correct for the equation. They will satisfy the equation. But will satisfy the triangle? What if you go to a poor triangle and say, I'm sorry, your hypotenuse is negative 5. And my poor thing will be like crushed into pieces. Do you understand? So the other answer is redundant. In real life, some answers are redundant. They don't really make practical sense. Just like the time being negative 25 seconds. What does that mean? Yeah? Okay. So, C is going to be 5. Do you understand that? Now, okay. How did we start this conversation? We started this conversation because we wanted to find the distance between two points, okay? I, ha I gave you these two points, okay? And I wanted to know, what's the distance from here to here? How do I figure this out? Okay? Alright. This is how, that's where this conversation started. And I said, well, to understand that, you first have to know the Pythagorean Theorem, okay? So I said, okay. Alright. So, now we have two points, like this, okay? We want to find a distance. Okay? <coughs> now, I'm going to call this one x1, y1, x2, y2. Is that cool? Can you handle that? Okay. And then I want to find this distance, right? You got it? Okay. I can't find the distance, but here it is. That's what we want to find. Okay? So the way we do that is like this, okay? I'm going to make a right triangle here. Like this. I do like this. Okay? You understand? I just I made a right triangle. It doesn't exist. Okay? Now, the distance, therefore, right here is C, right? It's the distance. You agree? Okay, in the right triangle. Now, this is A and B. Right? Okay. So, now I have to figure out if I call this A and if I call this B. Then I could say a squared plus b squared equals d squared, right? The distance between them. Right? So far so good? Why? Let me just do it this way. The distance squared is going to be a squared plus b <coughs> squared, right? <coughs> and the distance is going to be like square root of a squared plus b squared, right? That is, I took the positive and negative, right? <coughs> right? You got it? So far, so good. Now, what's A? How, what's the length of A? From here to here, okay, what is it? Okay, watch. Let's look at the example here. Now, imagine, okay, this point coming over here. That's that point, right? This point over here, right? So, the ordered pair that belongs to this is 5, 1. Let me just put that in there. 5, 5, comma, 1. You see? You see that point right there? See? You got that? So from what's the distance from here to here? It's gonna be like what's it? Two 
It's 3, right? How did you get that? I subtracted the x is 5, 5 minus 2, right? This one is 2 away. This point is 5 away. Look at this. This point is 2 away. This point is 5 away. So how, how far is the distance? Okay, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, 3, right? You got it? So how did I get that? Okay, I subtracted. So you take this x right here. That's over here. Okay, so this is x2 and this is x1. Everybody agree? So the distance here is x2 minus x1. Yes? Okay, now look at this one. Now look at the y, okay? This y is over here. This y is over here, right? Okay, so this is y2 and this is y1. So what's the distance from here to here? It's just the, subtracting the height, right? y2 minus y1, right? Got it? So now, I'm basically like, I go like this. So the distance, therefore, in Pythagorean theorem, okay, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let me just do it like this. Distance squared is going to be equal to a squared, which is x2 minus x1 squared plus b squared, which is y2 minus y1 squared, right? And therefore, the distance will be the square root of that, okay? x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now, I didn't put the plus and minus because we're talking about this, right? Do you understand? And this is a distance formula. It looks kind of complicated, right? So we simplify it. It's sometimes written like this. Distance is the square root of from here to here, the chest could just change in x. What change in x occurs, right? The difference in x. That's written like this. That's a delta. Change. That's what that means. Change in x. Change in x. Parentheses squared. Okay. Plus change in y. Parentheses squared. Okay. Now, this is typically how this is written as. Because, you know, who wants to write all the subscripts, right? Plus, this just looks way cool. Yeah? Do you understand this? So you subtract the x's, square it. Subtract the y's, square it. Right? And then add them up. Right? The sum of the legs, square the diagonals. That's what this is, the sum of the legs, square it, right? And then square root of that, you get the distance. Right? <coughs> so the distance formula is the square root of changing x squared plus changing y squared. Does that make sense? So this is what you have to know. So how do you find the distance between those two points? Okay, how do you find the distance? Do you got it? So the two points I gave you was 2, 1, and 5, 5. For your personal edification, I'm just going to write the distance formula here. I'm going to do it both ways. Just because I'm just such a nice guy. Got it? This should go over here. Okay, got it? And then, I usually won't write it like this, but I'm just doing this for you. Much easier, right? Do you understand? Got it. So let's do this. So the distance between these two points is going to be equal to the square root of the change in x's. It doesn't matter which one you pick, but it's like x2 minus x1, right? So, okay, so I'm going to do it. 5 minus 2, square root. I always put this parentheses, okay? okay. <coughs> and then 5 minus 1, square root. You got it? So this is going to be uh, 5 minus 2 is 3, right? 3 squared is 9. 5 minus 1 is 4. <coughs> 4. 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 4. That's 25. Square 25 is 5. It's the same like triangle we're talking about. Got it? So the distance between these two points is what? From here to here it is 5 units. Which means like 5 of these boxes. Like that much. You understand from here? That's the distance between those two points. Does that make sense? Okay, so what did we learn? I'm just going to summarize because uh, some of you guys missed some of this. Okay? So we learned two things. Okay? We learned <coughs> the midpoint formula. 
the mid if you're given two points, how do you calculate the midpoint? That's just easy. You just take the average of the x's to get the x coordinate, and then you take the average of the y's to get the y coordinate like this. Got it? So, and then we learn the distance formula between two points in the Cartesian plane, and that is this. Okay, so these two, yeah, you have to know. Okay, so just do me this favor, it's just like, right, just fight. Okay. Until next time, select with someone who's going to be